Spanish-Caribbean culture with an American twist, Puerto Rico is one of the world's most densely populated islands, home to over 3.5 million people. At 100 miles long and 35 miles wide, Puerto Rico is also the smallest island of the Greater Antilles in the Caribbean. The island has 270 beautiful beaches, over 200 caves, three bioluminescent bays, and is home to El Yunque rainforest. Spanish for rich port, Puerto Rico is an island with a rich history and a deep connection to New York City. Upon the signing of the Jones Act in 1917, Puerto Rico became a U.S. territory, and Puerto Ricans were granted statutory citizenship, meaning that citizenship was granted by an act of Congress and not by the Constitution. We are still citizens. We are still a non-incorporated territory of the United States of America. Miguel Treyes is the director of Teatro La Tea in the Clemente Soto Velez Cultural and Educational Center on the Lower East Side. I feel a lot of pride because uh, Puerto Rico gave me everything. I left at 17 to get a college degree in, in the United States. So I feel I have to represent. I have to represent because I've had a lot of opportunities. He is given back to the community as an adjunct professor for the City University of New York and as a visual artist who co-founded the Body Mix Puerto Rico Fest, which promotes collaboration between Latinx artists. You know, theater people come and I try to you know, get, get Puerto Ricans involved, get Latinos involved, Dominicano, Cubano, you know, Peruano, all kinds of Latin Americans, but Puerto Rico first. Miguel is among many island Puerto Ricans who came to the mainland U.S. to pursue a new opportunity, like fashion designer Paulette Guzman, who moved eight years ago and settled into Los Sure in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, where she opened up the clothing store Casa Musa. It's a clothing for uh, women who are in the go, who are very athletic and bohemian at the same time. Paulette intentionally created a community by showcasing different brands at Casa Musa. Creating a space that all these Puerto Ricans come and the, we can talk about our project and our future and what we love and what we are passionate about. And I think that's like a big, big inspiration. And, and part of the reason I, I stay here. Puerto Ricans in New York are often referred to as New Yorkicans. I feel like I'm a bridge between New York and Puerto Rico. So like I, I live in this world of New Yorico. Like I create it, I write it, I talk about it. I am totally New Yorican. New Yorican Caridad de la Cruz, also known as La Bruja, en New Yorico, ding, ding, ding. is considered one of the leading spoken poets in the world. She made her debut at the famed New Yorican Poets Cafe on the Lower East Side in 1996. It's given me a home and it's a beacon. It's a place where I also work out of and reach countless people. Now during this pandemic, we went online and reached internationally. So even though it's New Yorican, it's still like this United Nations of voices and hearts. An estimated 1.5 million Puerto Ricanos live in the New York City metropolitan area, making it the largest Latino group at 29%. East Harlem is home to a sizable population and is also the birthplace of many notable Puerto Ricans like Mark Anthony, Ray Barreto, and my father, the king of Latin music, Tito Puente. East Harlem is also known as El Barrio, the neighborhood. The area was predominantly Italian until after World War II when a wave of Puerto Ricans arrived. It's also the birthplace of New York City's first Puerto Rican assistant district attorney, Edwin Torres. It wouldn't have been a career path if I wasn't a Puerto Rican. First of all, my grasp and knowledge of the street came from being a Puerto Rican in the body in Harlem. Torres went on to become a Supreme Court judge where he sat on the bench for 30 years. He also wrote several books, including Carlito's Way, which became a movie box office smash. Carlito's Way was a very big movie and it put a lot of Puerto Ricans to work. Louis Guzman, the great Puerto Rican actor, he came out of there. I had many positive experiences with the, with the people of the barrio. They all looked out for me. That support is also felt up in the Bronx with restaurateur Jimmy Rodriguez, who has worked in the food industry for 40 years. Being Puerto Rican has influenced my career so much that it keeps me tuned with the food in our community, the music in our community, the entertainers in our community. Puerto Ricans are also known for their dance styles like salsa and reggaeton. But first came the dance style, Bomba. 
bomba is Puerto Rico's African heritage. It is song, dance, and drum, and dates back to the 17th century, a practice maintained by the enslaved and free people of color. Born and raised in Puerto Rico, Milteri Tucker came to New York when she was 17 years old to pursue a career in the arts. She is now the director of the Bombazo Dance Company in the Bronx, a nonprofit drum and dance company whose mission is to preserve, educate, and showcase traditional bomba and its folkloric elements. It's a gathering, it's a moment of coming together to celebrate not only of your roots, but also to express your freedom. Unlike other music genres, the bomba dancer sets the rhythm for the musicians rather than the other way around. It resembles a conversation. It's a mode of connecting and getting the Puerto Rican community together here in New York as well. I think that we've come a long way, long strides, and we have many exemplars, Puerto Ricans who have done well and succeeded and whatnot. No, I think the future is very bright for Puerto Ricans.